this is Axis and Allies on the Tool Desk channel and we are going to be playing some revised edition with a house rule because you know I like a good house rule. Uh, before we get going I should mention that I make these videos in aid of a charity called Cure Parkinson's. You can guess what they're trying to do. There is a link to them below this video and one in the banner on the channel page. If you happen to have a spare dollar, euro, yen, yak or an IPC you can send to them. I'm sure that they would appreciate it. Now the house rule we got is called the four turn game plan. It comes in one A4 sheet. I shall clip this. Put it on to the end of the video. If you want to fast forward to there and grab this and then ignore everything I say, then be my guest. I do tend to waffle. But this seven, this seven, this four turn and game plan comes in three sections. The first section runs from here to here. That's the important thing for the start of it. That's the important thing for the middle of it. And that's the important thing after four turns. Now, what it is trying to do is and I have an advantage, I have the funny lady comes in and she helps play the game sometimes with me, other times she won't, but sometimes she will just take on her power for one or two turns and she'll do some odd things. Could be completely brilliant, could be completely stupid, but either way around, it makes me think. I have to change my thinking around because when you're playing solo, as I do quite a lot, you can get into that habit of playing each power as you would play each power and not really mixing things up and giving yourself some some fuller challenges this four turn game plan does that um, the original version that's what I got seven from the original version was a seven turn game plan but I did t tend to find that after seven turns you know where the horse going anyway so it it's been pared down it's been changed altered adjusted and tweaked over several playthroughs and this one here is what I've got to, that I find is a very, very interesting way of playing the game. Now, to do this, before turn one, you roll two dice. A black dice and a red dice. Or other colours if you want to. And you can take a note of the numbers, those numbers for each power. Each power will get two numbers assigned to them. And according to this little sheety here, the first lot of powers on the black dice is how aggressive, how hostile that that power is going to be. The right hand side, the red numbers, are going to be um, type of equipment that they're going to purchase at the start of their rounds um, as per their attitude, their governmental feeling, the, the feeling of the people that the powers are governing. Do they want to spend lots of money on expensive equipment or small amounts of money on lots of little bits of equipment, etc. So, on a high number, a power will be aggressive, hostile. It will go for folks smashing into lots of other people, um, lots of small battles. A low number, solid core base. A power is going to try to keep themselves safe before they expand. And obviously there is the in-between that's prescribed within a few words. Um, the other side of it, with, with the, the purchasing, do you buy lots of infantry artillery? Um, do you buy lots of aircraft carriers and bombers and tanks and the in-betweens from there. Now, obviously, you can't script that so totally tight, but you, what you're trying to do is you're trying to assign an attitude towards each power. And if, say, you really need artillery for a certain plan that you've got there and it doesn't say you should be buying art artillery, well, yeah, buy one or two. But make sure you're trying to get within the, um, the, the the aspiration of your power, what they're trying to get you to do, to just to twist your thinking around a little bit. Now, to go along with that, the middle section says strategy. And what that's going to be is that you would take the two numbers that you have rolled and taken a note down and put it with each power in, in their in their um, parts boxes so you've got them readily available to look at you take those two numbers add them together divide them by two that will give you the total number of attacks that power can make in each turn so for instance if you happen to have an aggressive power that's rolled say a five and they've got some um, cheaper equipment they've rolled a, a four or a five say for instance um, they could make um, four and five is nine, four attacks, rounded up, five attacks in a given turn. 
if your power is one of those powers that are more um, wanting to build a solid core um, and depending on what equipment number they've got, they'll only be making two attacks per turn and that's prescribed so as it gives you a different way of thinking as to how aggressive you want to be and how aggressive you can be with those powers. The third part of this happens on the fifth turns, turns 5, 9 and 13, that you check the IPC track and each power will be at a different place on there, winners and losers. The winners will be tweaking, as per this chart, their dice numbers by a small amount. The losers, the actual bottom power of your set, will be re-rolling. They've got to start again and have a complete change of attitude, or not, depending on the dice rolls, but they're going to re-roll their dice. In between there, will be, will be tweaking what you can do with the dice. So, I should get on and play this game. I should play turns one, two, three, and four, give you a small bit of battle reporting, if required, and then when we get to turn number five, I'll come back to you properly and we go right the way through um, how all the leading powers and lower powers are adjusted. Um, before that, I shall get on to roll these dice for these um, five powers that are used in this game, and I'll give you a quick run through that before we start turn number one. So let's get this going with nothing more technical than some scrappy pieces of paper and a couple of dice. That is the SOV for the Soviets. This will be their attitude and their equipment. The Soviets have rolled a double one. That is not very good. That's a terrible roll. Um, okay, got to work with that one. Soviet. So we have a one on there and a one on the red side. Now that's going to mean that when they purchase, they're only going to be buying things that are expensive. They have expensive tastes. Um, it also is going to mean that they're only going to be making a maximum. I know so you add the numbers together and divide them by two, but there's a minimum number that, written on the sheet there. The minimum number of attacks, ATT, is going to be two. That's always a minimum number of attacks, depending on what happens. It just gets to help out, but obviously with their expensive tastes and... Um, Attitude of solid core and borders expand slowly as a number one. The Soviets aren't going to be going, going anywhere very quickly. Let's do the German ones. Hope for a better roll or a more appropriate roll. So, Germany's... Oh, six and five. Nice. So, number six on the attitude for Germany in terms of their aggression is going to be uh, expand at any opportunity and fight to the last. And the number five really appropriately works out tremendously well for them because a number five is infantry, artillery, destroyers and fighters as the kind of purchases that they're going to want to make. Six and five, make 11, rounded up to 12, divided by two, they're going to get six attacks per turn as a maximum number. That's really good for them. So the UK now, what are we going to do with them? They've got a four and a one. That's, again, an awkward one to work with. Uh, number four, in terms of their, their attitude of their country, is build towards expanding control. So they're going to be building up their armies and looking to expand in a controlled-ish fashion. But with a number one... They're going to be building slowly and expensively. Um, yeah, that's not going to be um, an easy one to work with. Nice. Um, the tax that they can make, 4 and 1 is 5. Maximum number of tax then would be 3 per turn, rounded up. Let's look at Japan next. They're going to be hoping, I think, for um, a, a low number of equipment. Which, it's a bit middly, that one, actually. Um, solid core... Um, borders protected expand with care Japan expanding with care okay that's going to be um, interesting and with a number three on their equipment infantry artillery cruisers tanks and bombers rather than um, going for the um, more expensive um, aircraft carriers and battleships so that's going to be some interesting work there. I'm, I'm looking forward to Japan this turn. Um, I often like playing Japan anyway. That's going to make some, some fun for us. And again, that's going to be three attacks. And 
with the last one to do, America Land. They're going to roll themselves a three and a one. Okay, that's not going to work out nicely, I don't think. Um, again, they're going to be um, protecting their core, safe borders, then expand. I think this is going to allow Germany, um, and only two attacks, um, allow Germany quite a good um, opportunity of running this game hard from the start, because they're the only ones that we have run a number on that's quite high. Um, they can be quite aggressive, do six attacks with some quite cheap equipment. Um, the UK, yes, they are not too bad in their aggression, but their equipment's going to cost them a lot of money every time because they're going to be buying the more expensive pieces. Um, again, you know, America buying expensive pieces and the Soviets, well, um, not very aggressive and spending money on frivolous items, <laughs> I should think. Um, so um, Japan's numbers, two and three. Um, so their number twos with their solid core and borders protected and buying some fairly middly equipment, that could work out quite nicely. I'm very hopeful looking at these numbers of, of an Axis pretty easy win. It's going to be hard for the Allies working with these numbers. Uh, we shall see how we get on. Um, these will go into the jaws, which are... Let me show you my nice set of drawers here with all my bits and pieces in. Just literally taking the, the numbers prescribed, sticking them on the money, because that reminds me every time where everybody is when we start playing this game. I shall see you at the end of turn probably number one or number two. OK, we have reached the end of turn number two, so a quick interim report. But before we do that, let me just um, mention something which I wasn't fully clear about, perhaps, in, in the introduction of this video. Um, with these um, red dice, for the units suggested that you can buy, that can be part of your regular purchasing, um, because there are so many different versions of Axis and Allies and different units become in and out of different versions, um, for instance this game doesn't have cruisers, it doesn't have um, tactical bombers, that sort of thing, so I haven't included all the units that are possible to purchase, these are just a suggestion of the way you should be thinking that the, um, the, the people of the powers are suggesting to their own governments play this way so it's not a fully comprehensive you've got to rock and roll it a little bit and use your interpretation of how those rules are going to work the other thing to mention during the um, turn one was uh, Germany decided to go for rockets as their tech and they got it on the first roll and America land got long range fighters uh, oh, sorry long range aircraft on their tech roll if they can get heavy bombers as well, they, they fail when they try the second time to get that. That could be quite a bit of fun. Um, but the uh, Germans are having a lot of fun with their rockets thus far. Um, the rockets in this version uh, can fire across three spaces, meaning they have attacked the UK's factories twice with their rockets, and the Soviet factory as well has been hit by rockets. That's causing quite a bit of damage economically because it comes straight out of the IPC bin. Let's have a little look at what's happened in the game thus far. Surprisingly, the Soviets, who rolled a double one, which meant they were going to have a solid core of expensive pieces, have done surprisingly well. It might not look that good just at the first glances, I've got something ever down there, that first glance, um, because the Germans are back there in, in numbers. But Germany are into Karelia here. They've taken the factory up in Lening, or the, the space up in Leningrad, should we say, and that um, one victory city. But um, their attack down into the Caucasus was a complete failure. Um, a, a host of Russian tanks and a whole lot of bad dice rolling by the Germans meant that the Caucasus didn't fall straight away uh, and indeed it allowed the, uh, the Soviets opportunity to come back from Russia from the Moscow state into West Russia and have just grabbed that state back again they're still obviously one Fritzsche city down but they're not doing too badly um, all these troops that the Germans are moving through they've had to purchase and move through on their cheap, their cheap and nasty buy that 6-5 um, roll which they had which was very uh, handy for them um, 
is allowing them to come back in greater but weak numbers. We have to see if this turns out nicely, but it is distracting anything from attacking the UK. I would suggest the UK actually have been the biggest losers um, so far. India has not fallen, but the, the fleet down here has fallen. And the Mediterranean is bereft of all but one German submarine that's got itself into here. Um, America then have come across into North Africa. Um, it was a slightly bold move, but it did work out nicely, and it was helped out by the Germans trying to attack the Brits from Libya and completely failing down there as well. So I think North Africa now is set for the Allied, but it's whether they can get enough units across back up into southern Europe, um, and whether the Germans are going to be too distracted by this um, Russian campaign to um, be able to make a significant hold um, down south. Um, I think the Axis should still be in front just here. Um, China has not been sorted in any way at all, because Japan have really taken um, their their uh, Emperor Hirohito's um, advice to heart. They have done very, very few attacks, but when they have done, they've been very, very focused. And obviously, taking the, the, the main British fleet out from um, the Indian Ocean um, and building up a big core um, around the Philippines and around their home islands, not advancing into China, not getting distracted up into Manchuria, they now look quite good for controlling the Pacific half of the map. Uh, America have, to, have made some expensive buys. It does look good for them with these um, battleships that are there. They've got three big battleships uh, and a few planes, and they're going to try and make up some kind of advancing task force. But um, whether it's too little or too much but too late, we should have to find out. Um, I will see you again probably in turn three or turn number four. Well, turn number three is done and done. It's been plenty much happening and very exciting. Um, the Americans once again have tried to get their tech, tried to get those heavy bombers to go with long range aircraft. It, it hasn't worked. They've bought themselves a big booming battleship to go into the Washington Sea Zone to try to help out support what's happening in the Med, which has been a clear out jobby. The uh, Germans did put some um, a destroyer in here to go with their submarine, but it didn't last long. The Americans said, hell no, you're not going to start building up into the Mediterranean. They put their two destroyers into there that was in C Zone 12, along with the air wing, and um, took those two um, pieces of fleet out. But Germany can rebuild from this Italian factory. America have got a much harder job getting units over, and so has Britain. Britain got no sea navy. Sea Navy, not even an Air Navy, they've got no Sea Navy to bring down into the Mediterranean to help clear that out. So it's still a little bit um, iffy as to who really is in control of the Med here. Yeah, obviously, um, North Africa is definitely ally controlled. Um, but in Europe, uh, the, the um, Soviet plan of buying tanks wouldn't be near their first plan, but it is still working out nicely. Germany did not attack them from... Um, the Ukraine into uh, into Caucasus, got the name for a second. Um, they, they they only had a couple of infantry artillery in there. Though their their ideal is to be um, expanding every opportunity, it's not supposed to be suicide missions. Um, they have to have the numbers to it to actually do that. And they, did, they didn't have the numbers there at the start of the turn. They did have the numbers, however, to get into West Russia. There was tanks aplenty. There was a Luftwaffe, and was is the um, appropriate word. That's now completely disappeared. There's no German planes left on the map at all. Um, the roles for the Soviets weren't particularly good, but the roles for Germany were absolutely horrible. They've had to reinforce it through there. They've had to commit units to going up north rather than down south, which does mean that though the Americans don't have a huge amount of transport or equipment in North Africa at the moment, the Germans have virtually nothing down here. Um, so it's still, as I say, in the balance that the, the, the south of, of Europe is in the balance. Um, UK have built themselves up in their home territory, they could do with buying some sea. They definitely could do with buying some sea. That will have probably happen on the next turn. Um, down in India, 
um, Japan's made, made two attacks. Um, India was one of them, and that didn't work out nicely for them either. Though Britain have got an anti-aircraft gun in here, that failed. There was a mainly air rig attack. They used a bomber, and I think it was three or four fighters. They completely failed. And um, Britain's tanks and infantry units did do enough damage to push the Japanese back home, um, or back to French Indochina. Um, perhaps... Japan should have thought about you making a, a amphibious assault so they could get some of their bombardment going, but they decided not to do that. That was a, a, a plan by them to get themselves back around to their home islands. Um, Japan's one successful attack was into China. The um, flying tigers disappeared from there, and so Japan could start threatening the um, eastern side of the, Russia should they decide to start pushing that far. Though I'm not a big fan, really, of, of, of um, Japan expanding too much into what would be European territory. Um, the only things to point out for the rest of the Pacific is it's going to be fun on the next turn because America land have gotten themselves together now, a big fleet off of Hawaii. Um, they can reach the Japanese mainland on the next turn. Not that they've got enough invasion forces, but they're going to have to try to do a, a, um, a smash and grab kind of um, attack, I suppose you'd call it, to, to reduce down the bulk of this, this, this of IJM, which is getting to be pretty, um, pretty damn strong now. Um, there, there, there's one, two, three, four, five destroyers that I can see for the Japanese, let alone their battleships, um, and obviously outnumbering America with... with um, Destroy with, with aircraft carriers and aircraft as well. So I think uh, America may have to um, abandon this plan of getting the heavy bombers, which has cost them 20 IPCs, uh, 25 IPCs so far. Um, it's not going to work out for them. They have to start thinking now about buying um, big Navy units and, and committing to, to one side of the board or the other. So I will see you at the end of turn number four. We haven't quite yet reached the end of turn number four. These are the replacements which will go back onto the board after the American turn, who finish off turn number four. But there's a bit of excitement over the Pacific. I wanted to bring that to you live because, well, we all like a good dice roll, don't we? So let's have a quick look at Europe first. America land have now shored up um, the Mediterranean. There has been some battles there. Um, Japan, Germany have put a couple of submarines off of Italy again, but America have got there with one big battleship. They're going to try and hold the, the plug hole in this port to keep those two submarines at bay. Um, and they bought themselves an aircraft carrier. Um, it's an expensive purchase, but they're hoping to control this and dissuade um, the Germans from doing too much down here, who have their own headaches to deal with. Their headaches have been caused mainly by the Soviets. Hooray! What the Soviets decided to do was to um, push forward from the Caucasus into the Ukraine. Um, it was a good battle, as you can see. Um, the Soviets have won that because they are there. They have taken the Ukraine. It left um, a fairly good artillery uh, infantry contingent from the Germans in here to have a go at the six surviving T-34s. Um, it was basically four infantry, four artillery versus six T-34s. And the T-34s, as you might be able to see, have won hands down. They can, they virtually won rolled um, the, the eight from the six, if you know what I mean. They, they, they hit terribly well. Um, all six hit, hit on the first occasion and the Germans really didn't hit back that strongly. Um, that distraction down here has prevented the Germans from coming forward up north um, and so again the Soviets haven't had to, to reinforce too hard up there. So that's looking quite good for the Soviets at the moment. Different story down in India where the Brits decided to pull their finger out collectively and went into French Indochina. There was infantry, artillery and some planes in there. They suffered very, very badly in their defence. Um, the UK did a sterling job. Japan said, well, we, we can't have this. We've hung around too long. Shilly shallied about too much. Didn't do the J1, J2, J3. We're going to try it on J4. And it was, well, a bit too late, really. Um, they had the numbers getting into, into here. Um, 
a small bit of uh, British fleet was there, I think, but there was um, a couple more infantry artilleries that are in there, and they've all gone. Um, but the, the Japanese could not, could not get the, te- the, the telling blow and take India itself, grabbing those three IPCs back, which is important on the IPC tracker for what happens later on. End of this turn is when we're going to do re- readjusting our governmental policies. The big battle that is going to happen, that we're going to put on the board as we do it, will be just in here. We are moving this entire American fleet, one, two spaces, to the Japanese um, coast. So it's going to be three big booming battleships going to go on the board, all at fours. A couple of submarines are going to slip in there too, although they won't get their first strike because of the um, destroyers that the Japanese have got. But they're still nevertheless going to roll a decent number. And we're going to put the carrier in there as well. If we're going to go for it, we're going to go for it big time. Um, and a couple of the planes that are on that carrier are going to go in there too and attack at three. The one that's on the island there, that can't actually make it over there and have a, a demonstra- demonstrable landing place. I think that's the word, demonstrable. Could be. And in there for Japan will be the four, four yes, four destroyers which have accumulated there um, from their purchase of the last turn and a little bit of purchasing from this turn. And obviously, their two fighters defending at the higher numbers of four. And a battleship and a carrier which defends at three in this game, which is pretty damn strong. Um, maybe a bit OTT, but that's the way it's going to be. Um, these two transport ships are in a different sea zone, 61 rather than 60, so they don't get involved in the battle. And this is how it looks on the board. Mmm, nice. So, let me get the dice tray somewhere where we can all see it collectively. And try and roll this without making any mistakes. I'll keep the cam up a little bit higher. Although you have to excuse the juggling that's going to occur because of that. So, America land first. And in case I forget to mention it, I tend to use the black dice as the higher register if I'm rolling two numbers together. It's just what I do. They have three battleships at four and two fighters at three. Let's give it a good little roll in my fingers. Oh, that looks nasty. That looks nasty. The three... Three at four, we have two hits. And two at three, we have two hits. Four of Japan. That is heavy as a starter. So, Japan are going to lose all four destroyers straight away. It's got to be the way to do it, because everything else gets a bit expensive. Okay, Um, two American submarines at two, and the one American um, aircraft carrier is at one in this game. So, shuffle them around, give them a roll. And they've got a hit out of it as well. Um, so, one on the battleship. I could have done that a different way round, but you know how it works out sometimes with these dice rolls. So, that is the American attack. Let's go for the reply now. Remember to assign the hits on the um, battleships if we can. We have, we have uh, two defending fighters at four and a defending battleship at four. And a defending aircraft carrier at three. What can they do in reply? Two at four, two hits. So America Land can take two of those hits on the battleships, immediately absorbing them. Hmm. All that's left for Japan is to roll is their four destroyers, which are already destroyed, but... They get to roll this go. That wasn't me rolling the dice. That me just plonking them in the tray. Four at four. Four at two, rather. And, oh, my giddy aunt. Maybe I should have grabbed <laughs> that previous time of dunking them in, because they've entirely missed. That has been a disaster for Japan. An absolute disaster for Japan. Um, they have lost all those four units. Uh, America have so far lost nothing. They've got casualties... Now, should America press this attack? 
why wouldn't they have pressed that attack? If they retreat out of there, back into C zone 51 around Wake Island, which is part of their route through, it takes them out of range of any air, but there isn't really any Japanese air left because of the Brits doing their sterling job. Um, and what's left in here is just going to be air in C zone 60, which is around the Japanese island that could reach the retreating American fleet. So there's absolutely no reason why America would not press this attack. They, they are simply going to press this attack. So, America land, with their three battleships at four and two fighters at three, are going to make their first roll. Three at four, two at three. Oh, oh. Uh, is that all of a Red Rover before you even have to start? Two at four, two at three have made hits. Um, we have one, two, three, four units. Japan have been wiped in two rolls. And you've got to say, wiped quite easily. That is an American overroll, which cannot be too bad for the American players. So, in reply, Japan will have their one limping battleship and their two fighters. They're at four, and they're one defending aircraft carrier at three. So, can they get anything back? That's pretty good. Um, not good enough, but it's three hits on America land. They are simply going to have to take one on the battleship. Um, and the other two are going to have to be on the two fighters, we think. So those two fighters get taken out of the game. These are all destroyed. America will be rewriting those at the end of their turn. That's what's going to be left in C zone 60. Let me tidy this up and get it back on the board. And then we would do, take the um, end of the turn phase with our all important rejigging of our numbers. OK, well, things are back on the board now. I've tidied everything away. And that battle was... Um, destructive well what would it be it was total annihilation of the japanese how did that happen i had to rejig my my thinking there um after the event thinking well weren't japan doing quite well and looking favorites they've um they had a battle against china against from Chari from china into sikang and lost that in a minor way but they weren't really pushing that hard um it really had to have been i i think the UK's push from India into French Indochina, which, which caused a split in that fleet, it caused the, 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 the aggression by Japan into India, which didn't work, which brought their fleets apart, um, which America exploited. Um, should Japan have gone early into India? Certainly should have done, but that wasn't part of their, their base core reasoning as per their values decided by their dinosaurs at the start of the game. Now... We at the end of turn number four, we are start of turn number five. We have to now rejig all our numbers. Let's have a little look, see at what we got here. We have got the values on the pieces of paper that we had from the start of the game. These are in the descending order. And according to our blue section of our sheet, just down here, it says the leading power, which is the US, they're on the lead, and leading is by the, um, the amount of IPCs they are generating, um, is minus one to one policy. If given a choice, prioritise the equipment, where well, their equipment value is already at one. They're already buying expensive pieces, so they're going to have to move their um, attitude down by one um, from protecting their borders to... Um, uh, and get, get a so protected core and safe borders to, to getting a solid border. They want to make sure that their, their core is, is, is hard and fast and, and protected and expand with care. Well, they've really um, done that already. They can't, I don't think, particularly get any, any more protection because they are a far away nation anyway. But um, they're going to have to look after whatever their fleet is doing there. Um, possibly bring those back to Hawaii to, to, to um, restock anyway. So they're going to be following that, that kind of um, ideal, um, pretty much as a natural course of their game. So the second power on here is Germany. They are 
just in front of the UK by just the um, the one IPC on that tracker there. Uh, and the second power, it says minus one to both policies if possible. So we can do that. Um, their aggression will go down from the six to a five. And the type of equipment that they will be buying will not be the mainly um, cheapy stuff. They'll start getting infantry, artillery, destroyers and tanks on part of their system. So that could be quite useful because they have been a little bit short of kicking power. They've had some bad rolls, Germany, but their kicking power has been um, part of their demise, I think, in, in, in certainly in the um, eastern theatre of, of Europe. The UK are in third place. It counts as the middle power. And if you're playing one of the bigger games with extra countries in there, you might have more than one middle power. Um, but it says minus one to the attitude. So their attitude at the moment, which is built towards expanding their cause, it says protect their cause, save your borders. Um, so they've done OK, but they haven't done well enough to think that they can really push themselves forward. Then it says shift... Um, what equipment one step towards a central number their set their equipment number is one which is the expensive stuff they can buy slightly less expensive stuff by going to a two it doesn't make a big difference but it's going to be a bit of a relief for the uk to not spend um so much money on a single piece they can start getting more multiple pieces involved in the action um and the central numbers here on on, on this issue is is the three and the four um being central numbers, um, if, if you're on a three, you switch to a four. If you're on a four, switch to a three. It's that, it's that simple a, a way of doing it. The second worst power happens to be Japan. The ones that we thought were doing so well earlier on, OK, economically they don't start off in a great position, but um, they've really gone backwards. I, I do think that was a mistake from their governmental policy not going towards Japan, not, Japan not going towards India very early on. So, second worst power is an attitude shift two steps towards the central number. So they're on a two, going towards central number of three or four, the two steps takes them up to a four. It means Japan will become a lot more aggressive. Um, rather than a solid core, it will be a build towards expanding their control. Um, so they're going to be, be accumulating more equipment, more infantry, more artilleries. Um, the other part of it says, um, re-roll the equipment number. I'll do it off camera, but I'll be totally honest with you. It is a one. Oh, my giddy up. Um, so they've got, they've got uh, the UK's problem there. Uh, Emperor Hirohito suddenly decided we're going to buy some, um, some, some really expensive equipment, rather, should I say. Eek. That's going to be awkward, especially with all those Americans camped on their doorstep. Although they're going to pull back to the Philippines, uh, to the Hawaiian Islands. Anyway, we, we think. So the Soviets, who have been the big losers... Um, the worst power in this game gets to re-roll both dice. Let me put it in front of us. Get to re-roll both dice. They can't roll a one, a double one again, can they? they? They simply cannot do that. Let's have a good look to see him coming in. These are the, the, the new numbers for the Soviets. Oh, five and a three. Good numbers. They protect their core, but they get to buy some cheap stuff now. Let me mark that down on the cards before we forget it. Soviets with much relief, a five and a three. Um, yeah, that they can expand some more and they can get a, a, a bit more better gear. That will also affect the amount of attacks per turn that they can do. Um, rather than just doing the, the two attacks from their, from their double ones at the minimum number, five and three is eight, they can do four attacks per turn. Not that they're particularly going to be doing all four attacks, but um, it's going to help them out a little bit, give them a bit more freedom to, to decide where and when they push themselves forward. So I shall jiggle all this around, have a load of fun doing turn number five and rejigging my thinking as per what the powers want me to do with it with each of them. And I will see you at turn five or turn six, depending on how this game starts rocking and rolling, how much excitement we get um, from the, from the continuation.
Well, the game has advanced to turn number six now. Didn't bother with the uh, turn five precy, mainly because it was a it was a, a general purchase round for all of the countries um, getting used to their new orders from above and um, rebuilding after the massive battles that had taken place in Europe and in the Pacific. Um, but with these orders. Um, you have to be flexible and to say, well, this is the idea we'd like you to go with. But in the general flow of things, if you need something else, you need something else. And to that extent, America have gone away from their big and expensive numbers to go for um, more infantry, artillery and um, transport ships. Because um, after the big sort out in the Pacific, which they won absolutely hands down with some amazing roles, they decided not to pull their fleet back from Japan to the Philippines. They said, hell no, we are going to stay there outside and blockade your ports. Uh, Japan's attempts to try to rebuild their fleet, anything they put down is expensive under their orders, but they can't put anything in there navy-wise because there's so much American navy here. They've now reinforced in there with a couple more aircraft. They've got a new carrier on board as well. And they are building up to come across and, and hit the mainland. Um, the rest of the Japanese fleet hid away. It pulled its transport ships back out from sea zone, I think that's number 60, away from where this American fleet was, had a pop at French Indochina while it was there, and completely fouled at that. Some absolutely horrible dice rolls. So um, they're going right back to, to, to the start of this game. Their attempts at um, holding off from invading India early um, has paid off badly for them. Is that if that's not mixed up metaphors paying off badly, it's gone badly for them. They cannot now get a foothold into China, and they're hanging on really to 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 Sikang. Um, all that the Brits have to do is turn around this way and wander up there, and all that uh, Quang Tung has got in there with that victory city is a couple of artillery with some Soviets above up north coming down through Manchuria. Um, Japan are in disarray. They look really strong for a while. As in Europe, I was quite expectant of an Axis victory here, um, especially with um, the Soviets buying tanks for the first of rounds. But it's worked out well. All the dice rolls have worked out bad, which every way you want to see it. Um, in turn numbers five and six, obviously, there was a rebuilding phase and... Um, Germany's rocket power has been doing a hell of a lot of damage to the Soviet and the British economies. Um, it's been quite annoying for, for both of those sides. But um, the, the attacks that they've been man managing to make have been quite limited, um, really through their resupply line being quite long, as it often is going to be for, for Germany. And uh, the Soviets have come back. They've now retaken Korea. They've got that rigid city back again. And they look quite strong up there. Because of the borderline coming round here, um, cuts off eastern um, Poland, is it? Eastern Europe, rather, from Norway, um, the Brits decided as a surprise early strike. They moved their fleet out from, I think it was Sea Zone 2 it was hiding away in, came across with some, with some um, transport vessels and popped in here against the, the three um, divisions of uh, German defenders that are up here. And they've now taken Norway. And there's no way Germany can get it back again because they haven't got transport. They haven't got a, a land route around it apart from going through Karelia. In the meantime, the Brits are obviously going to try to load up through there and, and, and um, reinforce their foothold that they've got up there. So um, the only other major battles was down in the Mediterranean where there's a couple of pesky German submarines took out an American battleship and two transport, which meant that um, it's delayed uh, America land's attempts at coming across from northern Europe up into southern, sorry, northern Africa up into southern Europe. Um, they've had to, to make a, a massive rebuy over this side, slightly limited what they could do in the Pacific, but they, they, the war is going really well for the Allied now. Um, a complete turnip for the Cooks. I'll see you turn number seven, turn number eight. We'll see how things rock and roll then. End of turn number eight, beginning of turn number nine, but the end of the video. Uh, as you can see, the Axis forces are in disarray generating very few IPCs compared to the Allied, and we haven't yet rejigged the numbers as per our instruction sheet. Um, the reason why we're calling it now is because the uh, Allied forces have reached eight victory cities. 
It's a minor victory according to the charts. I will go on myself and play it to a major victory, but I can do that off camera because there's a lot of shilly shining around you don't really need to see. I can't see it lasting more than two, maybe three turns anyhow. Let's have a quick uh, run through what happened. Over in the Pacific, um, the Brits came through from French Indochina and took Shanghai um, with their tanks and uh, I think there was some artillery there as well and um, the, the Japs could not hold or hold that back, even diverting some of its forces from uh, Manchuria and using some of its air units. It could not hold the Brits back. The Japanese have actually come back into French Indochina just to grab some IPC money, but that's not doesn't going to help them out at all. And taking the lead from there... America land abandoned the Japanese homeland, moved all its fleet, including the ones from Hawaii, in a couple of steps down into the Philippine Islands and have now taken the Philippine Islands, um, getting the, the, um, the victory city that's there as well and the IPC value. Um, so that, that, is the, that is really Pacific sorted out. It's only a matter of time. Japan can barely afford to rebuild their fleet up from just two transport vessels and and where, when they put them in the water they are going to be knocked out of them straight away so i can't see any way back for for japan unless there's some sort of miracle happens from from uh, germany and they themselves have their own set of problems because um the soviets and and their early tactic buying tanks that's well, I can't say it worked out well for them. It worked out very fortunately for them. Um, they had some okayish dice rolling going off throughout the early part of the game. Purchasing tanks is not a, a system I'd recommend, um, but Germany's replies were all horrible, and that really is the reason why the Soviets weren't crushed within three or four turns, and in fact have managed to prosper throughout that um, they have moved themselves forward, been a thorn in Germany's side throughout it, kept on just edging forward, edging forward, edging forward. And all the time this has been happening, the um, Germans have had to be assigning forces as, a, as a, a backup. They really haven't been able to push themselves forward much past grabbing Leningrad early on. Other than that, they've been reinforcing. And now the Americans have now come through... Um, have got control of the Mediterranean. They've had a couple of skirmishes into southern Europe. They haven't managed to grab a foothold there yet. But in their attacks down here, it's been diverting German forces away from the Eastern Front and away from holding the central heartland and even Paris. The Brits now, they've got through to Leningrad by loading some units around and they've come themselves back into the um, Baltic seas and, and can now really have a free reign of going either into, into German heartland or to be taking Paris for another victory point. As I say, it's not going to last more than a couple of turns here, and, and I shall play it out. But you can see how this game is played with this, um, this um, four-turn game plan. And with those units that you purchase, as I said a couple of times in this video, it's not um, a doctrine that you must obey and only buy these pieces. Uh, it, it's a... It's a an ideal that you are working towards. And, and with, say, with the Americans, when they were m making their invasion force, you can't build an invasion force on an aircraft carrier and a battleship. You have to buy the, the cheaper um, transport vessels, infantry, artillery, to make those moves. Um, so um, you, are, you are obeying the, the ideal. You're giving a personality to that country that that country wouldn't necessarily have from before. And obviously with that personality of the, of the Soviets buying tanks, um, I, I, my heart didn't sink when they rolled that double one much at the start of this game. But um, it, 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 it proved the challenge and really they were, as I said before, they were only saved by luck. Um, and And... Dice rolls and, and personality is all part of enjoying this game. So I shall carry on and play this out for another two or three rounds. It, it's not going to go on much longer than that. Um, but I hope that you will grab a couple of the screenshots from the end of this video and give this a go yourself. Tweak it to your own way of wanting to play it. It's entirely up to you how you do it. But thank you very much for watching. Until next time, be cool.